everybody, David Lowry back at you from the Southern Hobby Retail Expo here in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm here with Mr. Dan DeLorenzo from R&R Games and we are taking a look at Turia. So tell us a little bit about what we've got here. Well Dave, this is uh, Turia which we just released at uh, Essen. And um, the object of this game is you are a band of heroes and you are wandering throughout the kingdom trying to find uh, five gold pieces and five hearts so that you can enter into the kingdom and present them to the king to ask for the hand of his daughter or his son in marriage. So his daughter and son will be located behind one of these doors and once you uh, present the dowry to the king, you're able to uh, open one of the doors, okay? If you open the door and you find them, you win the game. Uh, but if you don't find them, behind each door there will be a tax. If you can pay the tax, you're able to uh, open another door. If not, then the turn passes to the next player. Now, so, does, it, does that other player get to see what you're opening, or is that yes? Secret? Once okay. a door is revealed, everyone sees what it's there. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, what makes this game so exciting is that you're going to be traveling throughout the kingdom, and you're going to be visiting several characters that are all put there to help you find the treasures. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take a moment and talk about each of the characters. So the first one is up here, and this is the goldsmith. So when you go to the goldsmith, you, uh, if you have the appropriate gems that he has for display, so if you see here, I have a red and a yellow gem, I can exchange them for four gold coins, okay? And I would put those back in the bag. If I come to the water fairy, I can deposit and get rid of a black gem. So you can't enter the kingdom if you have a black gem in your possession. So this is where I'm going to get rid of them. And the water fairy throws them down the well and they're forever gone. Um, if I come to the goldsmith, the goldsmith says I can trade one gem for a, a gold coin. Okay. Or I can trade two identical gems for a heart. Or I can trade three gems that are of the color of the dice. And this dice will, will change colors throughout the game. Mm -hmm. But if I have green, three green gems, I will get two hearts. Okay? Awesome. Mm -hmm. If I visit the knight, the knight says trade in a sword and you'll get a heart or three gold coins. Over here in this corner is the sword master. When I visit the sword master, he'll give me two swords. All right. Over here is the wood fairy. When I come to the wood fairy, she has magic acorns and she'll display two of them. I get to choose one for free that I can use later on during the game at any point in time. And finally, we come to the dragon. So when I come to the dragon, I'm going to take the die and I roll the die. So the die is green. If I have a green gem, I can exchange it for a heart. If I don't have a green gem, I can exchange a sword and I get a second dice roll. Now, if I have a yellow uh, gem, I can trade that for a heart. Okay. If I didn't have a yellow gem, my turn would end. Okay. And then finally, we have the thief. The thief, the thief allows you to grab three gems out of the bag, and I'm going to grab these gems here, and I'm able to take one secretly and keep it, and put it behind my screen, and I return the other two. But when you pull those three, do the other players know what you pulled out? Everyone gets to see what I pulled out, but they don't get to see what I keep. Okay. okay? So in this example, I kept a purple gem. A purple gem is very special in this game because during subsequent turns, I can use this for an additional turn, hmm. all right? So those are the characters that we're going to be visiting, but let's talk about how you move. Remember, I said we are a band of heroes and we're moving, but here's the dynamic that makes this game so unique. You can only visit the characters that are facing the tower in your direction. So uh -huh. as we sit right now, we have the swordsmith facing us, right. the trader, the wizard, or another swordsmith, okay? So we have to tell everybody where we're going. So for example, I might say, I'm gonna go to the swordsmith, and then I rotate that tower in the direction of the arrows on top, one quarter turn. So what makes this game really interesting is as play continues around the board, the characters that you can visit are gonna change, Right. okay? Now, I get, I can move any distance throughout the board, but I get the first three are for free, okay? Any movement beyond three, I must pay a gold coin. So okay. if I move five spaces, I'll, I'll have to pay two gold coins. Okay. Okay? But when I'm traveling along the roads, as I'm traveling over the roads, I get to collect a gem from every mine. So if I were to go in this direction, I would go one, two, three, and I'm there at the swordsmith, and I get to take one of these for free. All right? 
However, if I was, if I went this direction and I passed over a mine with a black gem, you must take both of those gems. Okay. okay. So I'd go one, two, and take both of these gems, and then we would immediately replace them with two more gems. Okay. At no time during the game can you ever display two black gems. So there's a, a, another black gem and a red gem, and then I would be given two swords, and my turn would be over. Okay. Okay. Now, behind our screens, each player will start with three gold coins and a potion jar. The potion jar is very significant in the game of Toria because if another player needed swords but couldn't get to them, they could give me their potion jar and they could take the same action of the character that I am visiting. So I would, I would regain another potion jar, but that person would then get two swords, okay? All right. When you're traveling along the roads, you can never retrace your steps. So I couldn't go one, two, three. I can never retrace my steps, but I can go one, two, three. Okay? Interesting. So that's the, the uniform movement of the band of heroes. When I have my dowry collected, my five hearts and five gold coins, and I don't have any black gems, I then, on my next turn, take my family crest, and I can say, I'm going to go visit the king. All right? So I place it down in front of the cathedral, and that enables me to open up one door for free. So let's say that I opened up this door right here, and it's a red gem. I didn't find the prince or princess. However, if I do have a red gem in my possession, which I do, I can pay that as a tax and open up another door, and up oh, I found Princess Tara and the prince, and I would win the game. And that's the game of Toria. Plays in about 50 minutes for four players, mm -hmm. and it retails for $39.99. So if the retailer wants to stock this game, who are they targeting with this game? Well, this is a, that's an interesting question. This is not just a solid Euro game. This is a game that any player of any skill level can play. It's simple rules. It's fun. Uh, it has a whimsical theme. But it has a little bit of strategy by moving the dancing towers and, and changing the position throughout the game. That allows you to maybe mess with the other players. Right? Absolutely, but yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so that's the game of Toria. And uh, it's, it's a, really a game that's going to interest not only the experienced gamer, but it's, it's going to bring new gamers into the fold because it's so simple to learn. Interesting, very interesting. And, and this is available? Currently. This is available currently, yeah. All right, so all you have to do is visit southernhobby.com or, of course, rnrgames.com. This is Dan DeLorenzo. I'm David Lowry with Club Fantasy. We will be back from the Southern Hobby Supply Retail Expo in just a few minutes. <laughs>